Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement guide and this time you're getting it all in Frog Detective, the entire mystery. Now this was developed and published by Worm Club and is usually available for around £12.49 slash $14.99 in the old US but it's free on Game Pass right now but for PC only. So that is no consoles, no Xbox, it's just PC Game Pass that it's on. So we play as the Budweiser Frog, who has gone from doing bad adverts with bud wise -er, to starting up his own detective agency. What, what a transformation. Um, anyway, it's our job to help him solve three tantalizing cases as the three separate frog detective games combine into one happy slappy combo. Now achievements wise, they are the exact same as they were on Steam. So there are six in each chapter, combining 18 of course, and they are very, very easy to obtain few small missables which are hard to miss, a lot of story related achievements and a few other ones where you have to basically exhaust all dialogue with every character on case 2 and have to answer one question, go through the credits, go back to the same question in the main menu and hit the other option. Genuinely just made that sound harder than it actually is. Uh, either way you're looking at around 2 to 2.5 two hours to complete this and basically in this video I've sped up the credits a little bit as well, I'll show you later on. So with that being said then, let us begin and again we're going to start with case one i say again i haven't told you yet but we are going to start with case one and the suave walk of the old of the old budweiser frog there is unbelievable uh so this is the first game basically the haunted island and this one's only going to take roughly about 20 to 25 minutes to complete obviously it depends obviously there's a lot of dialogue here so if you're playing with PC, you can use WASD to move forward, left, back, and right. Obviously, W to move forward. You press the Enter button in order to obviously pick things up and uh, skip through dialogue. And you can obviously move your character here with the mouse as well. Now, this does, I believe, this does have controller support as well. So if you prefer to use a controller, plug that schniz bags in and obviously use the controller. And obviously, it'll then be uh, A button for smashing through dialogue and the normal shtiz, as in left stick to move, etc. But anyway, I played it on PC, so I'll just be telling you, it's, it's all easy enough. Obviously, you can probably get these chapters done a little bit quicker, depending on how quickly you span through the dialogue. But what I'm doing again, as usual for all these types of games, I'm going kind of fast, but kind of slow, so that you can keep up as well, rather than blasting through everything, and then you've got to pause every two minutes to go, where the hell are you now? Anyway, when that is done, um, we can turn around. There is one table with a magnifying glass on it, so go over to it, pick that up, and of course, as, as usual, uh, you ain't going to be doing much detecting without a magnifying glass. So again, if you're on uh, PC, it'll be right click to zoom in, and it's probably going to be right bumper or right trigger, I assume, on the Xbox controller. I didn't use it with the controller, as you can see. So, st um, yep, stick your mouth on the doorknob. Stick your mouth on the knob and then uh, let's go. Off we go. Now, um, there are no uh, skippable cutscenes or anything like that. So any cutscenes um, you you look at, you have to uh, basically watch and look through. The only thing that we can skip quickly is the dialogue. And like I said, there is quite the bit of dialogue in this game as well. Um, now, obviously, you know, I highly advise just watching it because it, it is a very funny game as well. Very clever and very funny dialogue. But of course, if you just have to specific achievements, then spam through. Hey, brah, it's your gameplay. Anyway, here we are then, over to the Haunted Island. Now, that's what you want. Storm, but it looks more like a tiki-tiki bar, doesn't it? Rather than a Haunted Island, which I am up for. Okay, so as we begin then, what we're going to do, we're going to turn immediately back to the water and we're going to try and get back in the boat and that is going to get our second achievement. You should have already got the picked it up achievement, by the way. Now we're going to get the tried to leave achievement. Obviously, you're not going to see them for whatever reason, they don't pop up on screen when, you're, when I'm playing on PC Game Pass. So 
um, but you should already have two achievements. So go across and we're going to now speak to Larry the Lobster, who kind of looks more like an ant lobster. So a lanster or a, a obster. Yeah, anyway, smash through the dialogue for the time being. Now, a lot of the times, especially in the first game, you can literally just, if you want to exhaust all the dialogue options, there's normally only two options. Uh, but for now, we're just going to say nothing right now. But like I said, especially for the last two chapters, we're going to basically exhaust all the dialogue. But for now, what we're going to do then, uh, we need some explosions. So we need to go into the forest here, go to the left and talk to Mo. Mo is like the mouse. Mo, Mo, Mo. And anyway, let's smash through the dialogue. Uh, both options with Big Mo Sizzlack here, and he is going to talk to us about a little dancey dance competition. So, after you go ahead and speak to uh, little Mo Sizzlack Balls right there, turn around. We're going to head back to the beach and we're going to speak to M.M., who is directly in front of us, the one who's waving at absolutely nobody. Uh, you do look like you've got a bit too much uh, happy. How? What, what kind of happy have you got right now? Who are you waving at? Anyway, speak to M.M., mm, because that's his name, M.M., mm, for Mystery Monkey. Uh, he will help us out a lot <laughs> later on. Uh, so, again, it's... Just a case of smashing through the dialogue uh, as per usual. And what he's basically going to do then is going to give some dance styles. So sometimes you have to go through one specific dialogue option in order to get up another dialogue option. So that's why sometimes it's easier just to exhaust all, go through every option, and uh, you'll get what you need. So apparently then, we just got a nice little monkey fact. Here's a monkey fact for you. Monkeys like bananas, and they like throwing their feces at you. And that was two monkey facts, so uh, hey, you're welcome. Just in case you didn't know, that's exactly what monkeys do. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're going to go back into the forest, return to little Mo Sizzlack Balls right there, and again, go through the dialogue options with him. We're going to end up talking about dance styles, and then we will receive a bottle of mouthwash for some particular reason... <laughs> He's got a bottle of mouthwash on him. Alright, cheers, Mo. We'll uh, see you later. So let's turn around, go past the duck, head back to the beach, turn to the right. Turn to the right, keep going around the right, and what you're going to see is a bunch of rocks. What, what, what you're also going to see is um, Fresh X, who's basically quite nice shorts, bro. That is, oh, nice. Draw me like one of your little French girls. Thank you. Um, yeah, so that's Fresh X. Anyway, he wants to call us Det X, which, oh, D-Tech, sorry. 
So again, again, we're going to go through the dialogue for the moment. Uh, we're going to be called D-Tech, even though if it's me, um, I'd probably call myself D-Ick, to be honest. But uh, anyway, <laughs> smash the dialogue again anyway. And then what's going to happen is uh, we're going to give him the mouthwash in exchange for some toothpaste. Job done. Okay, thank you, Fresh X. You uh, enjoyed tanning in the dark, apparently. So, we're going to go back to the forest now. So, heading to the left, past Patrick Starfish, go towards the uh, straight. Go towards the straight broom. That's what we're after. Uh, you may have to go back j uh, just in case it doesn't work. But if it does, there we go. So, we're going to pick up the broom. And then what we're going to do, again, incredibly random, that these, these um, items appear randomly afterwards. So, you can't actually pick them up before. So, when you get the broom... Go left, back out of the beach, turn directly to your left now. And you're going to see Noodle, who is a sheep. So again, we do the same thing. Go through every dialogue option. And eventually, uh, we're going to give him the broom. And we're going to get some of his wool. Hopefully, that's the wool from his head. And uh, no wool from anywhere else. That would be uh, disgusting. Hey, excuse me, what's this white stuff in this wool? I, I, oh, it's just grey. Oh, sorry. Better not be your woolly piaubs. Anyway, since we do now have Noodle's woolly piaubs, we're going to go back and we're going to go into the forest again and then turn right when we get to the forest to talk to Martin, who is looking a bit like a little bit of a noivus poivus right now. Um, anyway, we need to just ask him about his nerves and then eventually we are going to receive a chunk of his pure... Gold. I love gold. Because this is basically Gold Member from Austin Powers. If you remember that movie, you are fantastic. If not, then you're too young, but I advise to watch it anyway. Although, if you're too young, you'll probably get offended by it, because all young people these days get offended by everything. That's just the way the world works, right? <laughs> right. Wow, thank you for that long, riveting conversation there, Martin. I, I do appreciate it, but thank you for your gold. Right, so what we're going to do, turn back around, go to the beach, turn directly to the left again. Oh, in fact, actually, let's have a look at this bug first. Oh, my God, that is... That is frightening. That is what Lewis Capaldi would look like if he was a bug. Uh, anyway, we do need to... That is just Patrick, Patrick Star there, just waiting for SpongeBob somewhere. So turn to the left, uh, have a look at this magnet here on the table, which again... Is not there, it will not be there earlier. It's only there after you do the things that we've done. So we've got the magnet anyway. So now we're going to go out to the water and interact with koala pants. 
which his name is, of course, Koala. Pa Koala, yes. Yeah, that is just his name. Her name. Anyway, again, after going through the dialogue again, what's going to happen is... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, you're going to swap the magnet out for a big shell, which you could have probably just got since it's a beach. There are probably lots of shells about, but, you know, why not work for everyone else first, huh? Okay, and now we've got to turn back around. We're going back into the forest and we're going to speak with El Ducco, whose name is Orbit. Fantastic name. Don't know what he's supposed to be magnifying right now. But again, it's the case of going through all the dialogue as we're doing, and this time we're going to swap the shell out for the magnifying glass. Man, nobody told me you were going to do this much walking. And finally, after what seems like an eternity of swapping things out for people, we're going to turn back around, go to the beach, and we're going to talk to Bernie the Bear, who's just next to Larry the Ant Lobster. So there he is, talk to Bernie the Bear, and then what you're going to do, you're going to exchange the magnifying glass for some pasta. So, I mean, in terms of dialogue, you don't have to exhaust it all in this one. It's really in case two and case three, where you end up having to, especially for an achievement in case two, where you have to exhaust all the dialogue options with everyone. So um, I just usually find it, unless it actually says the item in question, I normally just smash through uh, every dialogue option anyway, just to be on the safe side. But again, your choices in that do not matter. So don't worry if you've accidentally picked a dialogue option that you didn't mean to pick or anything. You should be Q. So anyway, after this one, we're also going to get the Hustled Hard achievement for getting some piester. So, Billy Big Balls is done. Uh, turn directly to the, to, the, to the right to speak to the ant lobster again. And, well, we're going to talk about the explosives. And then we're going to open up the entrance to the cave. The mystery is about to be solved. <laughs> Didn't need Scooby doing this one. Uh, although I would have preferred it. I do like Scooby. The world's weakest explosion, they all seem to work well. Right, so when we get into the cave, all you're going to do is just keep walking forward, and then we're going to talk to Finley, who is a chicken, and, mmm, mushroomy. Anything else? We've got some, like, you know, a steak with this mushroom, or, like, a big breakfast with the mushroom? No, it's just a piece of chicken with some mushrooms. Anyway, 
Here is Finley. You're going to talk to Finley and you're going to get the Got Spooked achievement here as well. So that'll be four out of six for this first case. Um, and you basically, this is where you're going to find out what the noises have been. And well, that's pretty much the end of it. I mean, come on. Bravo. Dancing for two weeks straight while taking a quick whiz, a quick nap, and a quick mushroom. Two, two weeks. That ain't going to make you nice and plump, is it, Mrs. Chicken? Mm. No, sorry. I, we're not talking about KFC in this video. No, no. Although I could do with the KFC now. I've mentioned it. Anyway, uh, that's basically the mystery solved. Now, what we're going to get, what we're going to get is like this big couple of minutes sort of credit scene where you're going to watch everyone start dancing. You're going to start watch everyone start practice dancing. Ah, oh, hello, Grace. This is the lady, or the, the lady, the part of the lady. No, this is the lady who made the game with someone else. But anyway, she comes in with some valuable advice there. So uh, the internet's not just full of facts. Um, books are pretty useful as well. And I'll tell you why the internet's not full of facts. You know when you've got like a little bit of a cold or you think, I'll tell you what, my knee's aching a bit. And then basically you go on the internet and it tells you that you've only got three months to live. And then you start crapping your pants, saying you goodbyes, and then you just realize that you knocked it against the table earlier and it's just a little bruise. Yes, that's why the internet can suck hard sometimes. Plus, of course, all the arguing with random Facebook strangers for some reason about absolutely crap all. Yeah, yeah, there is that toxic side to the internet. So books do come in handy. Anyway, after this bit, sorry, I just waffled on a bit there. What you're going to see, now I'm going to speed this up, purely because it does take a couple of minutes, but the other reason is, it just looks goddamn hilarious seeing everyone dance like that, and with the music going on in the background as well. But anyway, so you're going to have this little credit scene where they're starting to dance, and then, not only that, we're going to be a judge, and we've got to watch them all dance as well, which again, I've sped up, just to cut again a little bit of time in the video, but it also does look damn hilarious as well. Here we go. <laughs> It's so funny. As you can tell, I'm a simple man with a simple mind. So after the winner, oh, after the winner, after the dance competition is done, you can pick a winner and you can pick absolutely any winner you want. It does not matter. You're not going to miss anything. Uh, I specifically chose Finley just because of the fact she actually danced her ass off for two weeks straight. Danced her little legs off. And I wonder where they got the likeness from my legs as well. God damn it, that's impressive. Skinny chicken legs as I am. Uh, but anyway, uh, pick who you want. You're going to get the achievement called Pick the Winner. This bit's going to end and then we're going to end up back in our office. And we'll get the last achievement there. Goodbye! So, to close this case, or the case is already closed, to get the last achievement then, when the phone rings, give it a cheeky answer answer, and you will get the answer to call achievement, and we can go into case numero tuno.
There, there she blows then. So there, there she blows. Right, so when we get back to the menu here, obviously we're gonna head back. The suave walk of the old frog detective there, Sterling Archer Frog. So we're going to obviously choose back. You're going to click play on case two. You're going to interact with case two eventually. Where we get there? There it is. So play. Case two. Yeah, that'll be the one. And then play the invisible wizard. Now, like I said, okay, again, the achievement's very easy, but you have to make sure there are, what we got? Two, four, six. There are six people, or well, seven people actually to talk to. Uh, in this area, so you need to make sure to speak to absolutely everyone and exhaust every single dialogue option. It'll always be the same two questions. So again, when the phone rings here, we'll just answer it. It'll always be the same two questions. What happened last night and uh, what about the wizard? But you need to make sure that you have asked every single person absolutely every single question. What that'll do then is give a green tick in the book, basically saying that you've exhausted all motives and you've tried to ask them everything that you can. And that is what will get you the achievement later. So anyway, after we've done this bit again, turn around, pick up your magnifying glass, and head out the old wooden stair day door. Let's take a little look at this picture, by the way, before we head out. Because we are looking at the Budweiser frog doing what he did best. Oh, yeah, Budweiser. Living it up. Right. Anyway, this is just going to be one bit where we're going to see... Lobster cow! I could just see that being like, you know, one of those overdramatic... You know, over-dramatized American, you know, sitcoms type thing. Din -din -din -din. It's lobster cop. And then we've got a big cringy, cheesy couple of minutes opening. And, well, you know, you know the cringy, cheesy ones I'm on about. So after din -din 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 -din, Lobster Cop starts talking to you, turn to the right, rather than go all the way around. Have a look at the little sticky notebook right here. Now you can decorate this however you want. You can literally just put one sticker on it if you wish, but you're going to need to do this anyway. Uh, the game won't let you leave uh, regardless. So you need to do this anyway to get the achievement sticky. Now, again, I, I sort of played around with it for a couple of minutes, but I'm going to edit it out. And if you know what my sense of humor is like, <laughs> There we go. So I made a cactus have an, a two eyeballs and a big nose. I don't know what else you were thinking. And a big champion's cap for having such big lips, big eyes, and a big nose down where his wiener should be. Um, but anyway, <laughs> once that is done, or again, you've decorated however it is you wish, say yep. We're going to turn basically back around and go out the big main door. So it'll be to your right. So as you turn around, head out, go to your right, go all the way down. And we're going to start another couple of minute cutscene and end up in the Warlock of Woods.
Right, so not only do we have to again speak to all seven characters and exhaust all the dialogue options, we also need to find five lost pies that are chilling on the ground, which look mwah, immaculate. Or so, uh, what we're going to do then, as we begin, again, it's only this small area, so don't worry about you know going nuts or anything. Uh, so, what we're going to do first, we're just going to head straight down. You can see Carlos's shop, the big zebra, Carlos here. There is one of the first of the five lost pies. So again, obviously press enter or the A button there to pick it up. And that'll be the first out of five. Now, when we do that, it does look, it does look nice. KFC pie, please. Delicious. So turn directly around on yourself. And just to the left, you're going to see one lost pie on the floor. Plus Victor. Victor Bushkebab. Who, I, I don't know why that's his second name, but it is now. Victor Bushkebab, who is in the hot tub. And that's who we're going to speak to first so that'll be two lost pies you should have now and we are going to talk to victor and then eventually he's gonna, gonna basically give us one money And if you want the gross achievement as well, when the next dialogue option comes up after we get one money, we are going to try and give Victor Bushkebab the lost pie. So again, you can see about last night as well, which of course we have to do anyway. So make sure again to exhaust all the dialogue options as well, but also make sure to try and give him the lost pie dialogue option and that'll get you the gross achievement. So, thank you, Schwinkter. Right, now we're going to talk to everyone. So, from here, immediately go straight, ignoring the Ralph line on the left. We're going to go ahead and speak to Susan here, first of all. And this is what we're going to do now for the next sort of seven or eight minutes. It's literally just spam, spam through the dialogue, exhaust all the dialogue options with every single character. And remember, you've got to make sure that, you that you've spoken to seven people. Uh, so, if you want to, um, if you open up your tab... That'll open up the notebook, or I think it might be the X button, I think, on the controller. You can then see who you've spoken to, so make sure that you've got all seven. So again, it'll always be about the wizard, about last night, and that'll be that. So smash through all the dialogue here, and then what we're going to do then is just turn to the right and speak to Mary. Thank you. 
So when we turn to the right here, go to Mary's house, and in the flower pot just to the left of us is the third lost pie. So make sure to pick up the pie, go ahead, speak to Mary, and do the same thing. Make sure to exhaust all Anne's dialogue Anne's. Well, la di da, Mr. Frenchman. What do you call it? A car hole. So, immediately from Mary, go straight, and you're going to speak to Carlos. Remember, the uh, lost pie is just under the table, if you missed that somehow earlier. Uh, make sure to speak to Carlos. Again, do the same thing. Smash through the dialogue, exhaust every single option. By the way, there's not an actual option, uh, or there's not a particular order that you have to speak to these uh, characters in, because we're going to turn directly around here. This is Mandy with the pie shop. If we have a look just to the right there, though, there is another lost pie just on the... Uh, it's the right-hand side of the stage if you're looking at it from the back, but if you're looking at the stage from the front, it's on the left-hand side. Anyway, that's where the next lost pie is, so grab that one, and then we're going to speak to Mandy and just do the same thing again. Exhaust all dialogue options.
So now you should have spoken to five out of the seven characters, only two left, Noddy on the stage and Ralph the Lion right in front of us, the the Lion Pirate, or the Lyret, or the Pion. <laughs> I like the sound of Pion a lot better. Anyway, speak to Ralph and again, do the same thing. And after this, then, we're going to grab the fifth and final Lost Pie. So if we go to the right slightly, directly in front of us on the lamppost, back in our starting area is the Lost Pie. Again, I did have a look earlier, but there was no Lost Pie. It's only when we do a bit of the story. That'll do it. So that's the final Lost Pie that we've got. So we can obviously go back to Mandy in just a bit. Uh, but turn directly around, head up the stage, and speak to Big Nob Nob. N nod, Nod, sorry. Noddy. Not, not, not Nobby, but Noddy. Mm-hmm. So after this bit then, uh, we're pretty much all good. Now, uh, we're going to speak to Mandy again, of course, to give her the uh, last pie. And then what she's going to do is give us, she's going to give us one money and a fresh pie. Now that, for finding five other pies, I will take one fresh pie. Because that shit look good, man. Maybe she, maybe it's just because she's got a big fat nose. That's why she can smell it so good. In fact, if she's got such a big fat nose, she could have found the pies herself. Lazy git. Uh, anyway, we got a fresh pie and we got one money. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do a little bit of exchanging now. So instead of everyone getting together and go, that's a nice ride. Can I have that in exchange for building supply? No. Apparently, we've had to come in, speak to everyone and do it ourselves. So again, as long as you've got the tick there next to whoever it is, that means you are good to go and we're uh, making progress towards the achievement. So uh, what we're going to do, return to Victor, who is, of course, in the hot tub on the left-hand side. We're going to give him the fresh pie in exchange for a party hat. Thank you, Victor Schwinkter.
There's another tick. That's exactly what we want by Mr. Schwinkter Bags. So, uh, turn around. We're going to give the hat to Carlos now. This is Carlos the Zebra in the shop. We are going to give the hat to him, and he's going to give us another monies. Which, now that we've got three monies, it really begs the, the quote. Oh, I've got no money and three kids. Why can't I have no kids and three money? And why do I feel like I just butchered that there from Homer Simpson? Anyway, that is... <laughs> no, I do love my kids dearly, but I really could do with at least at least two money right now. But we've got another money off Carlos anyway, and the rug. So what we're going to do here now, we're going to go back to the stage, visit Noddy, and give her the rug, which we, she will give us one money and some building stuff. So, should be another tick there for you as well, as long as that's all good. We are on to a Wiener. Uh, a winner, sorry. So, you go to Ralph the Lion, and again, we're going to give him the building stuff, and he's going to give us one more monies and another hook. Come on, Ralphie boy, let us see that tick, lad. Oh, yeah. There we go, that's the tick we need. Right, turn directly to the right, and we're going to speak to Sandy, the kitty, 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 kitty cat. We're going to give her the hook in exchange for access to her house. Meow. Ribbit, ribbit. So there's the tick. Should we have a little look? Oh, a couple of pictures on the wall. Uh, well, it looks very small, but anyway. We need to go back to Carlos anyway. We need to get the big spender achievement, which you can easily miss this one, actually. So head to Carlos here. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what I was doing there. Having a spasm on my hand. Uh, we're going to buy a photo with the three money that we've got. And after we do that, we're going to get the big spender achievement. But uh, Grace, she is going to put her wisdomous face back on our screen and say that we actually need five money in order to finish the game. So out of her own goddamn pocket, that's just incredible. Uh, she's going to give us five money there to finish the game. But by now, you should have just got the big spender achievement. Um, so, I mean, there we go. Um, I know it's come out of your own pocket there, Grace, but hopefully 
you've made more than three money off this game anyway, so, you know, you should be good. Hopefully we're not robbing you. Hopefully you've made enough money there off this game to see you through and, you know, make the next game. Hello, Grace. That's a nice face you've got there. So, yes. Hurry up. If you've got enough money, make the next game. Get a Kickstarter going. So, now we're going to go to Mary here. Hello, Mary. Um, <laughs> what we need to do now is give her all our five money in exchange for a phone number. Oh, yeah. And as it turns out, it wasn't Mary's phone number. It was a random broskies, which, uh, eh, you know, I'll take my, I'll take, I'll shoot my shot. But, um, well, Mary, I thought your big rhino nose was looking good. But anyway, since it's not, we're going to go back to Susan's house and we're going to use the phone to dial the number. Let's have a look inside. Is it anything good? We've got a phone and we've got a bed with a bunch of love hearts. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, if you're old enough to understand, you'll know exactly why this is not a quote-unquote real house. Just a phone and a bed. Hmm. Anyway, enough said about that. Call the mysterious number and um, we're going to have a conversation with Mysterious Broski. Right, since the conversation with Barney is done, we're going to head out of the house, go to the right, and on the floor to the right, just next to the first post, is a bunch of glasses. I say a bunch of glasses, it's one pair of glasses is what I meant. And then what we've done, uh, now, basically our notebook should now be complete apart from the page for the Invisible Wizard. So that is who we're going to go for next. So again, if you want to have a quick check um, and have a look, make sure that you've got all um, seven other characters done and complete, including Barney actually, so eight characters Otherwise, you should be good. Head towards Carlos, head to the right, and ex enter through this door. Now, it's going to be a little bit of a... I mean, it's not really a puzzle, but it's something that we've got to do. So, you're going to see a pie directly in front of us. Sadly, the pie does absolutely nothing. We just have to now walk around the boxes and click on the wizard a couple of times. So, first of all, she's going to be where the pie is, directly in front of us. So, click on the wizard first. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Well, that wasn't an answer. Uh, turn back around, head to the left here, where we are, and then just go around the boxes again. And that's going to be where the wizard is the second time. Stop being magic. Stop bean flicking magic. Bean magic. Right, and then the opposite side of the room is where the wizard's going to be for the third time. And then what's going to happen is a door's going to open, we're going to head down, and she's going to reveal her identity. My gosh, there it is. The door directly is, it was open directly in front of us. For some reason, I decided to go completely the opposite ways and be a bit silly about it. But now, this is where we have to make a choice. Uh, luckily, we don't have to play the entire chapter again, though, just to get to this choice. So basically, as a, if, you, if you're not really sort of looking, basically, the Invisible Wizard uh, reveals herself to be Lola, and... It was her who accidentally just trashed the whole joint, which is not very good. But she wants you to basically say that the evil guy did it. Now, if you say the evil guy did it, you'll get the Fibber achievement. If you say that Lola did it, you'll get the Snitch achievement. Uh, but there's a little way that we can come back to this point without having to replay the entire chapter again.
So this is where the achievement is then. And eventually we'll get a choice. Again, it literally does not matter because everyone's always happy whether you say Evil Guy did it or Lizard, Lola Lizard Frog Legs did it. Um, so you can choose whichever one that you want for now. Also, with the Invisible Wizard, that should be your notebook should now be completed. So when we get back to our office in just a bit, you should now get the Expert Investigator. Uh, so eventually when we get there, so you can either choose Evil Guy did it or Lola did it. Makes no difference. Just make sure you remember which choice that you made. Now again, it's going to be a case of this is the end of the this is the end of the mystery. So we're going to go through another little credit scene, which again I've skipped up because they look hilarious when they're dancing, and you will get the achievement when we get back to the office. So when we get back to our office then, you will now get uh, whichever one that you chose. So for me, I chose Lola. So I'm going to get the Snitch Achievement. And again, I'm going to get the Expert Investigator Achievement. That is for completely completing your notebook. So you should get two there. So answer the phone when it rings. And then we're going to obviously gonna, just going to go back to the main menu. Right, so when we get back to the menu, what you're going to do is press the shift button, L button, and 
the number four button at the same time. So shift L and four. So when you click, again, I'll say it one more time. So when you click shift L and four, all at the same time, what you're gonna do is go back to the very sort of last scene just before you answer the question. So this, thank God, you don't have to replay the entire of case two again, because as fun as it was the first time, I'm one of those that once I know that something's happened, I really don't wanna play through it again. Uh, so luckily we don't have to do it this time. So whether you picked evil guy or loader the first time, uh, choose the opposite one this time. So for me, it's gonna be evil guy. And uh, when we get back to the office again, you're gonna get the Fibber achievement. Uh, now I'm not gonna show you the entirety of it again. I'll just uh, skip over this bit and I'm basically gonna cut it out and go back to the main menu. So of course, you're probably gonna have to pause the video just while your credits roll and all that stuff before we head back to the main menu here. And then it is back to case three, which is a little bit longer. But again, you'll get the uh, achievement, the relative achievement there when you get back to the office. So that should be 12 out of 18 done now. So play again, we're gonna play case three. Now case three is quite the bit longer. Um, there's, I mean, the area is just a little bit bigger. Um, a few more people to look at. There's a lot more dialogue this time. So you'll be pressing the enter button slash A button quite a bit more this time around. Uh, so play, of course. Again, there are two achievements that you can miss and the, uh, three achievements that you can miss, sorry. And there are three that are story related this time. So uh, smash through, again, do the same thing here. We're not Detective Frog anymore. We are Rhino Detective, which, hey, nothing wrong. Hail Mary, ah, oh, yeah. Anyway, answer the phone, go grab your magnifying glass, and we will end up as Big Frog D. Ick Detective again. So here we are then, Cowboy Corruption County, whatever it's called. So we're gonna answer the phone here, and again, smash through as we've been doing. <laughs> Right, so now we're going to interact with the scooter just by the phone box. So, obviously, you need to press the enter button there to, or, or the A button to pick it up. <laughs> wow, it's a Yum Yum Ram Ram 3000. What a scooter. So, the way you use it, um, it is the shift button in order to get on and off. So, hop on there with the left shift. And then, of course, it's normal just as you've been doing with WASD or left stick up, down and all around. Uh, but eventually, we're going to get there. There we go. So there it is. You can look around with a ma uh, mouse. Use the space button to jump, which again, I probably assume would be the A button on the Xbox. And then just head forward for another little cutscene and the Made It To Town achievement will pop eventually.
Why bind ding dong dong boy? Wow, wow. What the hell? Wow, what a desert, man. Uh, a bunch of fowls and cattle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, when this is done, again, like I said, you would have had the achievement by now. And then what you're going to do is just literally go forward and have a nice, long conversation with. Laps the cap! He's on the chase! And his little. His little knob nosed friend, the Sheriff Mole thing. So yes, that is how you get off and on the scooter, by the way, by pressing the left shift. Uh, we don't use the scooter an awful lot in the game, though, to be fair. So just head straight down, speak to Din -din -din -din, and little, um, little knob-nose mole thing. Oh boy, that just kept going, huh? That's a that was a long conversation there. So anyway, case three, mystery of the missing hats. Um, yeah, so let's go find some hats. Do you want me to spoil it and tell you where they are? They're right under your nose, which could mean anywhere in here. Anyway, lobster cop. Now, of course, lobster cop. Is he good? Is he bad? I'm very jealous. So tall. I am jealous of tall people. They seem to be able to reach stuff a lot easier. So what we're going to do, you can hop on your little scooter, which is exactly what we're going to do. Excuse me, I was pressing the tab button there instead of the shift button. So, scoot on, and now we're going to get a missable achievement here for trying to break into the graveyard. So, basically, all you need to do is just keep trying to jump into the graveyard. Not sure, sort of, if it's... You've got to try and do it however many times. So, just keep trying to hop into the graveyard until the achievement unlocks. Uh, and you'll get the graveyard break-in achievement. That, that's pretty obvious. I never thought I'd see the day where a frog's going to be in a scooter, but it looks damn suave and damn cool doing it. So anyway, once that is done and you get the achievement, we're going to head straight in front of us into the bar saloon. Saloon bar, bar saloon. Eventually. So if you're as uh, crappy as I am on the scooter, just jump off. Don't look at your banana, <laughs> your, your banana nose notebook. Just head off, go straight in front of us, and we're going to speak to... Blair. Barney. Barney. So again, uh, what you need to do... Now, you don't actually have to exhaust all the dialogue options um, because there's no achievement tied to it, but it's usually easier just to do that because you have to... Basically, like I said in the first case, you have to speak enough about, about enough things in order to progress the story and ask them about something else. So again, it's pretty much just easier to exhaust all the dialogue options again.
Now we're actually going to get the second missable achievement here as well, called Haunted Photo. Hate creativity. Well, don't we all? Nah, that's that's very narrow-minded. So what we need to do is just interact with every single one of these pictures. There are five pictures to look at. One here, and obviously four more to the left of you. And then when you do that, a haunted photo shall appear. <laughs> now that was my attempt at a scary noise, but it just sounded like I was freezing to death there. So, uh, well, never mind. You son of a, you just, uh, you crap my pants right there. <laughs> anyway, that's, um, that's a hell of a looking ghost. But what we need to do, we've got that, you'll automatically grab that. Turn around and speak to Pistol the Panda, the old panda pistol himself. And to get this achievement, all you've got to do is try and give him the photo. So, eventually, you're going to spam through the dialogue as usual, and you will then get the option to give away the photo. That is what will get you the haunted photo achievement. And now it's going to be a while before we unlock any of the last three achievements again. So there we go then, that'll get you, like I said, you should have now have got the Haunted Photo achievement. Only three left to get. So we're going to head back out, we're just going to head uh, straight in front of us there and interact with the key lock. I'm pretty sure you don't have to do this. Oh no, actually, in fact, I think you might do... Yeah, yes, you will. That is to progress the story. So from here we're going to turn directly around and we're going to go straight and we're going to go right into this little photo print looking shop. Uh, and we're going to speak to... Carrot head. Wendy. Wendy, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, just exhaust all the dialogue options. You pretty much know what to do by now.
And again, this is me just going and talking to these people in a random order. We do need to do these in a specific order to get specific stuff in order to give specific stuff to specific people. And we end up in the Pacific Ocean, specifically. Um, yeah, so anyway, that was uh, wi Windy? Windy Wendy. Sorry, I hope nobody's called Wendy watching this. I, I do apologize. Um, but if you've had a bad case of the poops, then you can be called Windy Wendy. That's funny. Funny, right? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we're going to interact with the carrots here, right uh, where Wendy is. And um, yeah, so by the carrots, that's going to give us no more money, but we got some carrots as well, which I find is just a brilliant trade. So we're going to turn around, we're going to head out the shop, go slightly left, and you can see the barn, but we're going to interact with the town's map first, which I just made that almost a little bit more difficult than it needed to be. But interact with that, that's going to get us the town map, and then what you're going to do is go ahead and speak to the little other thing, the other creature. What? That, no, no, that might be a mouse, actually. Yeah, that... You a mouse? No, you look kind of mouse-ish. Anyway, Ronda Dynamite. Now, that sounds like either a bad wrestling name... Or a bad porno name. Either either way. I, I mean, uh, yeah, great name, Ronda Dynamite. Hi, Grace. That's, again, Grace here coming out with the top advice again for everyone. Don't give out your, your address to strangers. Because strangers are pretty strange. That's why they're called strangers. Otherwise, they'd be called nicers. So after this bit then, when we're going to be doing, we're going to uh, turn directly around, go straight back into the bar, straight in front of you, and speak to Panda Pistol. Pew, pew. There he is. And again, like I said, any time that we've got to keep speaking to these um, uh, animals or whatever, you just always, if there's any new dialogue options, exhaust them all. Hooray! Little green tick means we done good. Right, turn to the right, head up the stairs. Obviously go to the left, there's only one way to go. Head to the left again, and you're going to end up speaking... Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, you're going to end up speaking to a dynamite head, Dusty, right here. So, he's very one of those poety poets who you always got to try and know it. Either way, sometimes when he's, when he's saying a poem, the uh, dialogue's going to go slowly. And eventually, we're just going to be able to bash through the dialogue. And, yeah, do that thing.
Yay! Dusty's done already. There's Nez. Oh, no, don't say suspicious. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to press the space or enter button, or it'll probably be the A or X button, you can view them as suspicious, but there's literally no need to do that. Uh, you can if you want. Either way, we're going to get on a scooter. We're going to hop down. Whee! Get off our scooter, and we're going to go and speak to uh, Mandy Mouse, whatever her name is here, in the barn again. Right, so from the mouse, go left here, and we're going to go into the next building on the left. Oh, look at that. Just like just like a lot of my jokes, just tumbleweed and silence. Uh, so go in here, interact with the gloves on the table. That's a great, uh, it's a great picture there of the um, of Knob Nose Mole on, on the test draw. Cracking picture. Feeling a very Philip J. Fry here with uh, when he's in competition with the monkey. I don't like you, you miserable looking knob nose. Anyway, turn left as we exit and speak to Bunny Chick, who wants to basically break into the bank. She's asking us for help, old Susie. We're obviously not going to do that. But we may just help her with a little thing, you know. <laughs> but nobody should know because I am the Budweiser detective. Well, aren't you miserable? Uh, you do need to speak to her again, so speak to her again. That whole conversation was basically every real-life relationship. Can you help me? No, I don't think it's a good idea. Um, go away, leave me alone. And there we go. All right, then. Okay, what do you need? I just need you to act up, son. And, you know, as it goes. So turn directly around, head into this shop. And we're going to speak to Craig. Craig the cow. Uh, and then all we're going to do, we're just going to get one item off Craig. And we never actually have to speak to Craig again. So it's a win-win. As we just get over yet another argument with our significant other. Hmm.
Another green tick means we is good. Uh, again, doesn't mean that you're going to miss out on achievements, so don't worry. Uh, out of this shop, turn around to the left and go into the next shop, the old Wendy, old Windy Wendy right here. And again, apparently that's as, that's how it, easy it is to get a pickaxe. Um, just by getting something off someone and giving it to him. So give the item, the portrait item here to the Wend bag. <laughs> the Wend bag. So now we got a ladder, which, I mean, we had some money on us earlier. We could have literally just got the ladder to go down the well to get the key to finish it off earlier. But there we go. Uh, now go straight, uh, head to the left of the graveyard, and you're going to see a little flower on top of this cactus, which is originally called the cr uh, cactus flower. So we need to grab four of these right now. Now, the <laughs> obviously, the, the way the landscape looks, it looks like it could be massive and take a lot of exploring, but it's actually not so bad. So what we're going to do then, go straight from where we just found the cactus flower, big snake on the left, big tumbleweed. You can get back on your scooter for this part, go straight ahead, up this little hill, and there is the second cacti flower eye. So whap your notebook away then, get back on your scooter. And, or you don't have to if you don't want, but we're just going to head directly left now. So up this little hill, and we're going to speak to Pee Wee Sherman for a moment. So again, we're just helping a criminal with his criminal activities, but we do get a shovel for it as well. So, uh, you, can, you know, you win some, you lose some, it all balances out in the end, doesn't it? It's like, you know, the balance of you going to McDonald's or KFC, getting a big, fat, chunky bunch of burgers, and then getting a Diet Coke, because that's a good balance. Exactly good balance. I know what you mean. Okay, so off to find the third one now. We're going to get back on a scooter. We're going to head directly to the right, just behind the buildings here behind the bar and everything. Head to the right again, and you're going to have to jump up and hop up a couple of these uh, big mounds or whatever the bloody hell they're called. So, yeah, you actually have to hop up on them onto your scooter. Otherwise, dude, it's just not going to work. And somehow I find, I think it's probably easier to control it on the controller rather than on the PC. But anyway, this is where the third cactus flower is. So we've just got one more left to grab.
So after that's done, go back on your scooter. Now we need to jump a little bit of a chasm here, so it's directly in front of us. So what you need to do is obviously go forward, press the space or the A button to jump over, and there we go, that's all good. Just to the right of where we're going to finish here is the fourth and final cactus flower that we need to grab. So that's all good. Now we can get the deliciousness that is stew. So we're going to head back on a scooter, go straight forward, jump down, head to the right, and we're going to go back into the bar and speak to Annie Manny Fanny Annie, or whatever her name is by the bar. I uh, forget. Stew for tea, tea for stew, two for tea, two for tea, and tea for two. Anyway, head back out, go past the lobster cop right here. It's going to be a little bit of an edit, but we need to just go back past the lobster cop, get in your scooter, and head up this big, chunky bit of cliff right here. Providing you hit the right-hand side sort of one there, straight on, you should be able to jump up so we can drop down. And get off your scooter, interact with the well. In fact, we are pretty much, we're almost done now um, in terms of gameplay. There's just going to be a lot of dialogue and unskippable cutscenes for sort of 10 to 12 minutes or so. So we got rid of the ladder, drop that down, have a look down below you, and you can see, Tada! The key to my heart is a bacon sandwich. Honestly, it is, it is that easy, to be fair. Um, so you've grabbed the key. That is the key for the graveyard. That's all good. Now we can turn directly around, head back up the ladder. And then what we're going to do now, we're going to jump back onto our scooter. And we're going to go back into town. Oh, <laughs> and apparently I was just on the floor. So there we go. So what we need to do, we need to go to the sheriff's office or whatever it's called and speak to... Uh, Mason Knob Knows Mole. I'm sorry, it's just what it looks like. I, I say things as I see them. So, there we go. So, go ahead, speak to old uh, Knob Sack right here. After we've spoken to the happiest guy in the land, turn around, go to the right, and we're going to speak to the mouse in the barn, old Ronda Dynamite, the old WWD, WWE star turned porn star, Ronda Dynamite. Damn, she's dynamite. And since we've got the fake ID, we can turn around, go to the left, and obviously head all the way up past Knob Nose's office, and to Susie. Bound to tumbleweed out your way. Here you are, now don't tell anyone it was me, because, you know, wouldn't look good on my record and all that.
And now here's the big one, the moment of truth. Head straight towards the graveyard. Now we can go ahead and speak to Lobster Cop. Uh, again, just to basically say we've got everything that we can and he's going to uh, basically give us no permission to open up the key gate, graveyard gate. So what we need to do here is go around the grave or the big build church building and just interact with the three mounds. This is where all the mystery hats are. And now get ready for about 10 minutes of dialogues and cutscenes. And there's going to be like a four, three or four minute credit scene as well, which again, I've just sped up to speed up the video a little bit. But anyway, all you got to do after this bit is just go back towards the town to start all that stuff off. I've been framed! And also, somebody has put... Uh, now, that would have been easier if I had a picture of myself in a frame, but there we go. Uh, this is the worst day of my life. The worst day of your life so far. Yeah, I feel like the frames... I, uh, damn it! If I had a picture of a frog in a frame, that frame joke would have gone down a lot better. Otherwise, you can't see anything, so... Don't I just look stupid now? So, uh, that's basically it then. Um, it's gonna be... Like a little tiny bit of gameplay left to do with someone else a little bit later on. Frog's going to get chucked in jail. His Budweiser days are over. But we are going to get the Bad Room achievement. Uh, which you will get automatically.
Now, you also would have heard some music there as well, but just in case I get copyrighted for, you know, keeping the song in, I decided to uh, just get rid of that entirely. Um, obviously, skip the credits. That'll take a couple of minutes to do. Again, this next pie is all just dialogue and cutscenes, so you literally don't have to worry about anything for the time being. Why do I feel like the Go-Jetters, um, if you've got a toddler, you'll know what the hell Go-Jetters is. Go, go! Go, go! Go, monkey! Go! Detective monkey! Go, 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 and all that jazz. Yeah, I just feel this is a hell of a kid show, this will be. Uh, wink at me! You little winker. Anyway, with that, you will get the monkey achievement, and now there's only one more missable achievement left to get, and that is the kiss achievement. <clears throat> Oof. Anybody remember that song? It was like early 2000s, Holly Valance, Kiss Kiss. I tell you what, in the days before the internet became a massive thing, for young, horny teenagers, music videos were just, well, they had to do. Now, you couldn't really rely on your imagination much. You know, Christina Aguilera's Dirty Video and Holly Valance Kiss Kiss Video. Well, they had to come in all the rage. Now, of course, everyone gets offended by it, so, you know, it's not as good as it used to be. But anyway, here we are as Detective Monkey then. So, what we need to do is go straight in front of us to enter Detective Frog's office. And all you're going to see, there's nothing else to see here except some dusty clue stuff. Clue detecting powder, of course, that's exactly what I meant. Now, to get the last achievement, we need to go back to where the last... Uh, we're going to left-click here. What you're going to see, see is... We need to go back to the photo frame, sorry. So what you're going to do is interact with the table and interact with the floor. You're obviously going to see a bunch of footprints. Uh, you don't have to wait until they're all fully formed or anything. You can just keep on going. It's fairly obvious where the path is going to go. I mean, if you realize the game by now, you'll probably know exactly where it's going to go. So just keep clicking the left clicker or whatever it is for the controller. Now, it is going to show you that it's going into... Lobster Cop is coming! He's Detective Lobster Cop! The door's going to open automatically. But again, to get the last achievement called Kiss, what we're going to do, don't go in just yet. Turn directly to the left, go all the way down to the photos. And then what you need to do is put the clue detective stuff on each picture, so all three, until a fully formed kiss is... Well, fully formed. And then when that happens, you will get the kiss achievement. That is actually the last one. That is the last achievement of the game. So when the achievement uh, pops, which for some reason it didn't for me at this point. Uh, so just, if again, if it doesn't, just keep putting the spray stuff on all three and eventually it will do that. So if you literally want to leave it here, there's literally, honestly, there's not much more of the game. There's like 20 seconds left of the game, uh, of gameplay anyway. So you can keep going in. Again, like I said, that's the last achievement. So if you want to finish here, that's more than up to you. Uh, completely up to you. What we're going to do, is I'm just going to show you the last bit of gameplay. And then the rest is literally just one big cutscene and dialogue. 
and everyone makes up and everyone's happy. So you just interact here, automatically interact with this. You're going to pick up the notebook or whatever is inside the uh, drawer and you're going to see that Knob Nose and Lobster Cup are best buddies. Well, maybe they've had a little uh, cheeky cheeky wing wing wang 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 as well. Maybe we don't know, but um, maybe Mason's mold his way straight up lobster cop. Who knows? Because uh, there's a little love heart. That's why I assumed that. But anyway, after this bit's done, it's literally just another couple of minutes cutscene and then a whole big dancing section at the end with the credits roll. And that's job done. So I am going to leave it here then, guys and gals. You should have now 18 out of 18 uh, achievements for Frog Detective, the entire mystery. Uh, just want to give a big shout out there to Worm Club. Very, very enjoyable game. Actually, very good. So thank you so much for watching, guys and gals. Hope you enjoyed the game of the guide as well. If you did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. I'll see you in the next one. Ba 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 big love. <laughs>